we were very concerned about some of his actions with regard to his use of donor money in the Father Jackson fundraiser. That's nothing to do with Father Jackson. In the Father Jackson fundraiser. That's nothing to do with Father Jackson. I'm an attorney. Are you an attorney? I'm confused. Because as of Monday, March 14th, one day after releasing this video, the State Bar Association of Indiana disagrees with you. The fact that Niles is on camera claiming to be an attorney without an active license, it's a little white lie that could mean that somebody theoretically confesses a crime to her assuming they'd have attorney-client privilege. She'd, of course, be obligated to report it, and there'd be no privilege. This certainly seems like a very serious lie, actually, doesn't it? I absolutely support the right of every single person to have due process to have a fair legal defense. I have always believed that and I always will. Is this why on November 10th, 2021, you demanded that I refund all the money now, every penny of Father Jackson's legal defense fund? Which Christine Niles are we supposed to believe? The November 10th refund every penny Niles? Or the new and improved March 13th Niles, who suddenly believes in a fair legal defense and due process? I can't help but notice that the newly reformed March 13th Christine Niles hasn't deleted any of her vulgar, disgusting tweets about Father Jackson and how guilty he is. Out of respect for him and his family, I won't display her vile tweets here, but my hunch is that the November 10th Niles is the real Christine Niles, and the March 13th Niles is just a crude attempt at damage control. More lies from lying Christine. Surprise, surprise. This is about me asking questions about the way that Mike Parrott was going to use donor money. That's nothing to do with Father Jackson. That's nothing to do with Father Jackson. Parrott has admitted he has no connection to Father Jackson. He doesn't even know him. He has admitted that. Isn't that a benefit? Doesn't that just prove that I'm not emotionally invested in the outcome of this case? This is precisely why donors gave. They knew I'd follow the facts wherever they lead, instead of convicting Father Jackson on Twitter like Christine Niles did. He offered extremely vague responses that didn't directly answer my questions. I'm conducting a confidential investigation, just like I was tasked 16 times in Afghanistan to conduct confidential command investigations into all sorts of matters. I don't owe you any specific answers, Christine. You're neither a donor nor a friend. Why would I share with you exactly what I'm doing, what I know, how I've acquired it, or what my future investigative plan is? You have no right to know anything. In fact, I regret the many, numerous pages of information I already provided you early on. You deserve nothing but to be ignored like the pest that you've proven yourself to be. Church Militant has no right to know anything about any of you, actually. I don't recommend that you click on any of their links because they might be phishing attacks, and I certainly don't recommend you communicating at all with Christine Niles or answering any of her questions. Michael Voris learned that he was actually going to conduct a bait and switch on donors, where he promised them he would use the donations for one purpose, but then he was actually going to use them for a different purpose. That is technically fraud. When you promise donors you're going to do A and then instead apply it to B, that is technically fraud. What bait and switch? Notice how vague she's being about it. She had the opportunity here to be specific and she couldn't. It's just a bogus claim. She doesn't even manage to keep a straight face when she's saying it. It's exactly these types of hollow statements that have caused people to scratch their heads about this the whole time. Remember when Voris said, we did release everything, and the guy talking to him was like, yeah, I know you're saying that, but there's nothing to what you've released. Zero hard facts, zero evidence, just innuendo and implication. So why wouldn't you guys release that if there's issues there? We have released it. We've released all of it. You want to read the lawsuit? It's online. I read it. I read it. Yeah, well, there you go. The guy has a history of stealing money. We have the right to pursue you know, the restoration of our name and reputation in court. Listen, Christine, if one guy with a webcam and a mortgage has caused the big establishment multi, multi-million dollar church militant to suffer such grave harm to its name and reputation, then you were a collapsing house of cards all along. Clearly what's happening here is they don't like the fact that I released the blackmail, the threats, the quid pro quo, I've had prosecutors tell me it's textbook extortion. And that doesn't even take into account the fact that phishing is a form of wire fraud, another textbook crime. Here's a little advice. If you don't want your good name to suffer, don't be a bully. 
Suing me isn't going to undo your litany of misdeeds. It won't undo, for example, all the examples of tax fraud, investor fraud, and corporate fraud that Dr. E. Michael Jones accuses you of in his bombshell book, The Man Behind the Mask, Michael Voris and the Homosexual Vortex, which, by the way, is back in print. EMJ shows the raw emails between Carol, Cohn, Bramer, Voris, and even makes very detailed mention of your role, Miss Niles. Your alleged criminality is well documented in the book, which is in the public domain, and it's known to many. In the general judgment, it will be known to all. Lashing out at me won't undo the misappropriation of assets or the outright theft of content Dr. Jones proves you've been a part of for years. And by the way, why didn't you sue EMJ when he called you a criminal? Is it because he had evidence? In any case, returning to this employer, um, Michael Voris texted him and was very concerned because he said, okay, I'm really concerned because Mike Parrott is involved in this and what we believe are very shady dealings. And we're very concerned this is going to come back to you and that this is going to blow up and it's going to harm your company, which you spent years building up. This is the thuggish mafioso tactics of Church Militant. Hey, it'd be a real shame if someone were to, uh, you know, link you guys in your woke industry with this fundraiser for a conservative priest in this specific way, on this specific date. It'd be a real shame if your entire business were destroyed. In fact, that's exactly how my partners interpreted Voris's pestering of them while they were on an active job site. Let's reread Voris's text message. David, in all honesty with you, there is something desperately wrong with Mike. A chunk of that phone call I had with him is how his fraud in collecting money from hundreds of Catholics to, quote, examine the evidence is just one secular reporter away from blowing up in your, capital, faces and wiping out your work. He's a fraud, and some reporter, once the Father Jackson story gets traction, which it will, is going to chase down his fundraiser scheme like we did and tried to handle privately offline. And that's one step away from you guys and your business. Can you imagine yourselves tied to a fraudulent money scheme to protect a perverted priest? If you don't think that headline isn't something every secular reporter in America would not want to write, guess again. Mike has deep problems. I'm telling you now so you have time to think it through and prepare before in case it blows up. Someone is going to find the connection to you guys. You know, we don't want that harm coming to your company, which is why Mike, Michael Voris reached out to this friend of his, this longtime friend, and explained all of this to him. This particular employer um, has been longtime friends of Church Militant for years. We have known him for years. We've been friends with him for years. With friends like these, who needs enemies? To be clear, my partners are not friends of Michael Voris. They despise him. They think he's a trash journalist and a washed-up weirdo, to put it politely. The one time one of my partners visited Voris in Detroit, Voris tripped all over himself to post a picture, which my partner immediately demanded Voris remove from social media. My friends wanted nothing to do with Voris or his toxic organization. They told Voris to leave them alone and to stay out of this. They felt threatened by Voris, his weirdly specific threat. So they kicked me off our job site hoping to placate the self-styled mob boss. And his friend looked at Parrott's online behavior, his abusive online behavior. You know, he, he looked at all the things that Parrott was doing publicly and he decided, rightly, that he was going to cut off Parrott. It's really unfortunate that Niles can't stop lying through her teeth. My partners helped me form the fundraiser for Father Jackson from the beginning. Here are just a few text messages from November 1st, plotting the launch of the fundraiser. There's even a text on November 5th congratulating me on its success after the fact. It's not like supporting Father Jackson was some sort of secret that I was keeping from them. In fact, they all support Father Jackson. Hate to break the news to you, Niles. That was his own decision. We didn't tell him, oh, you need to fire Parrot. We didn't say anything like that. Very few thugs come out and directly say what they want. Of course, Voris isn't stupid enough to just directly say what he wants. 
Innuendo and implication are the go-to smear tools of yellow journalists like Christine Niles and Michael Voris. They sought to ruin me, and they got exactly what they wanted. Because of us, he got kicked out of the U.S. Marines. Um, again, a complete and total falsehood. I know for a fact that multiple people submitted complaints to the U.S. Marines. Multiple people unconnected to church militant. It's true, I was read my rights by the investigating officer and formally investigated specifically because of Church Militant. Here's a copy of the Command Investigation Appointment Letter, which lists the Father Jackson fundraiser and Church Militant's lawsuit as the primary, if not sole, reasons for the investigation. Here are some of the written questions that I answered to the investigating officer, with some of the answers obscured for this video. Practically all of the questions had to do either with Church Militant or Father Jackson. This entire investigation and its consequences are 100% about church militant. Christine can attempt to appear sane in her curated fireside chat video and flippantly write off the sterling record of an officer of nearly 15 years with multiple combat tours, multiple personal awards, including three commendation medals, and successful tours of command. They're claiming that it wasn't just them to anonymously send a report to the USMC. I'm sure Niles can furnish specific proof of this if she ever wanted to, but she hasn't. The facts are the facts. The quote-unquote anonymous report that initiated all of this was their own bogus lawsuit. I've seen the email. It is a link to the church militant lawsuit. This is precisely why, on November 10th, I pleaded with Christine not to dox me, writing to her, quote, I understand you're preparing some sort of hit on me and my family. I hope that your better angels deter you from this. I rely on my reserve health care for my children, and as you know well, and as I've discussed on Tim Gordon's podcast with Michael Voris, being outed as a faithful Catholic would have adverse consequences to my reserve service with the Marine Corps. I hope you do not make the calculation that endangering my family's financial and health security is worth some clicks when I'm just trying to do a good thing with respect to Father Jackson. You can tell that Christine is a faithful wife and loving mother because her response to this email directly was, quote, as to your claim that you are trying to do a good thing with respect to Father Jackson. I, I would, that's nothing to do with Father Jackson. That is precisely what is in question. I, I would, that's nothing to do with Father Jackson. The public deserves to know what will happen to the money. If you refund all the money now, every penny, we'd be glad to hold off on any public report on you or your financial dealings. If you intend on keeping any portion of the money, then there is no guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, I was well advised by people who are both inside Church Militant and very close to Church Militant that Christine Niles in this email was lying through her teeth. They were going to smear me no matter what I did, even if I gave all the money back and abandoned Father Jackson left him by the side of the road to fend for himself. I had no choice but to continue this matter, but to stand shoulder to shoulder with Father Jackson, another military man, and not abandon him. And that's exactly what I've done. And I didn't ask Michael Voris's permission to do it. Impugning my chastity, which is beyond the pale. Niles claims that calling her, quote, Winebox Niles is impugning her chastity based on some obscure Urban Dictionary definition that no one's ever heard of, certainly not myself. I don't even go to UrbanDictionary.com. The fact that she is so familiar with the most obscure, least tracked, disgusting slurs on Urban Dictionary, you can interpret that however you'd like. But by the way, the term is wineboxing with an I-N-G. That's a gerund. Niles. For someone who claims to be so accurate about her language, payee versus payor, she's lying to you by changing the grammar of a word. Besides, when Niles posts pictures like these to social media, who wouldn't call her a wine box? Listen, I like to have a cocktail on the rundown, but I don't keep a bottle of vodka next to my bed. And am I really impugning her chastity when this is the kind of stuff she posts on her own timeline? Look, if she's impugned her own chastity, that's her business, not my business. The fact of the matter is that she's actively lying to the court as part of her desperate attempt to smear me and save face from her thuggery and blackmail. He is the one responsible for everything happening to him, losing his job, getting kicked out of the Marines, you know, having this lawsuit brought upon him in the first place. This is a lame attempt at damage control. 
The woman then puts on a display of false piety and claims she prays for me daily. Given the fact that she spends nearly every Sunday and holy day bashing me online, talking about my mortgage, my clothing, my chickens, even my bachelor party, I find it hard to believe that she's spending much time in prayer at all, let alone for me. But I do agree with her on one point. Everybody's tired of this. I know you're tired of this, and believe me, if you're tired of it, I'm much, much more tired of it. All I've ever wanted was church militant to leave me alone and to let the truth prevail for Father Jackson. Those have always been my settlement terms. I've made them public countless times. I've conveyed them in writing through our attorneys. Church militant hasn't settled this issue privately and didn't accept my generous terms. I had offered to apologize on camera for things getting out of control. I was prepared to take full public responsibility for scandalizing the faithful. All I wanted for them was to leave me alone. Take the pictures of my house down. Delete your false claims that I'm a Nazi. Stop accusing Father Jackson of being guilty merely because the man held his peace. As a matter of fact, I'm still prepared to do all that. I'm still prepared to end this feud. I am prepared to forgive them for doxing me, trashing my reputation, hacking my friends, blackmailing me and my family, intimidating my business partners, and interfering with a good faith effort to find the truth for Father James Jackson. My message today to Christine and to Michael is this. Put an end to this. Walk away. I forgive you. Let's make peace. We all have bigger fish to fry. I have a family to raise and you have sex crimes to expose. What do you say?